Are you bored during load shedding, sitting there with not sure what to do and just waiting for time to pass? My suggestion to you is that maybe you need to check out the Electro 100 watt portable power station, which can power any single household device, either being your internet, your TV, for upwards of two hours. So this is the Elector 100 watt portable power station. So this can act as a mobile power source and has an included built-in LED flashlight. It's ideal for whether you're camping or just need a small amount of power to power up your home. And the good thing is that it can be charged either by solar charging or even your car charger or your car socket. So this can power your router or your fiber box um, it can keep your mobile devices charged during load shedding or extended power outages and it, it can even charge um, our laptops because it has a built-in USB-C port and this has high capacity Tyrion lithium batteries so you know it's going to last much much longer. So in terms of technical specs, the input voltage is 19 volts at 3.75 amps and in terms of output voltage, 12 volt DC output port and the good thing is that when you purchase this device, it actually includes a 12 volt DC port converter, that one that's built in here, to a cigarette lighter or a car charging socket. After that, then we have our two USB ports, which are both 5 volts at 3 amps. Then finally, we have a Qualcomm 3.0 quick charging, which is 18 watts fast charging. So after that, then we talk about the power output. We have a maximum of 100 watts power output, and then the total watt hours actually converts to 155 watt hours. In terms of battery capacity, this device has a 42,000 milliamp hour battery. In terms of dimensions, it's 18 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 18 centimeters, and it weighs 1.6 kilograms. The specified charging time or charging period set out by the manufacturer is between two and four hours but we'll talk more about that when we get to my experiences with that. So in terms of build quality it's quite a sturdy build quality it's quite tough hard plastic it does have multiple colors and everything I haven't actually peeled off all the plastic but obviously I'm not because this is the manufacturer's sample or manufacturer's device but I mean it's built awesomely strong it has a cool design a cool look and it's actually functional being or having rubber feet at the bottom the light being placed in a functional space where you have the handle and your light facing forward your SA prone plug is in a functional space as well as well as your USB ports it's not awkwardly placed so the design even the plastic the plastic is tough so that's a good thing and I mean I haven't experienced any overheating even when I ran the TV and stuff the fan very rarely kicked in but I never actually maxed out the 100 watts uh, usage on this device so now it comes to who is this device built for so obviously it's built for anyone that's affected by load shedding or someone who just wants minimal power output when going out and doing outdoor activities. I think more especially when we talk about low shedding. This isn't meant for someone that's power user, they want to power the PlayStation, they want to power the 42 inch TV and everything. No, no, no. This is 100 watt hours again. So the fact that it's built with a single plug socket means that it can supply power to a small amount of devices for a long period of time. That is more for a single person or a small family, two, three people, and they just need it to get through these two to three hour load shedding periods or prolonged power outages, right? So when it comes down to cost, what does this device cost? So the 100 watt retails anywhere between 2,800 and 3,500 Rand, but there are other devices in this range. So firstly, there's a one and a half thousand watt device, which retails between 22,000 Rand and 24,500. And it has four prone plug sockets and four USB ports. There is also a 500 watt device, which retails between 7,300 and 8,500. And there is a 300 watt device, which retails for about 5,000 Rand. And obviously we've spoken about the 100 watt device. All right, so now let's talk about the estimated runtime of this or of some of the devices that connect to it. So the manufacturer suggests that a 100 watt smartphone can last up to 15 hours charging on this device. A 10 watt tablet can last 15 hours as well. 
as well as a 10 watt LED floodlight. In terms of a fiber box or an ONT and a router, which is 10 watts, it can last up to 15 hours on this device. CCTV cameras, which are 15 watts, can last up to seven hours. Office phones, can, which are five watts, can last up to 30 hours on a single device like this. And then when it comes to portable game stations, which run at about 10 watts, can also last up to 15 hours. And a 24 inch monitor, which pulls about 15 watts, can last seven hours. And eight laptops, which regularly pull about 65 watts, can last two hours. As well as mini fridges, which pull 65 watts, can be powered for up to two hours on this device. In terms of seeing the pros and cons with this device, I think one of the big pros that I feel is its portability, the fact that it's light, I mean, to provide you with a 100 watts worth of power. Being 1.6 kilograms, I mean, I could swing this and move somewhere. And I mean, it provides suitable power. The other thing is that it's small. In terms of usability, I mean, it's simple, easy to use. So that's also a very big con. I mean, I got caught out the first time, how do you turn on the LED device? But when I swallowed my pride and read the manual, it was simple and easy to switch on the light by just double pressing the power button and the light turns on. I mean, everything that I've said in terms of the pros of this device, I that also forms part of my personal opinion. I'm happy with how small, how minimal it is, the fact that it gives you your one prone SA plug. And I was actually blown away by the fact that you could use this to power a cigarette uh, or a car device through the car uh, plug socket or the car cigarette socket. And I actually suggested this to my um, place of employment because we use the vehicle to do some stuff. And I actually suggested this device so that we're not leaving the car idling when we're testing and we're actually using something like this. Um, in terms of my experiences, firstly, we tested this device with a 32 inch Sinotech TV which was 45 watts. And I actually have the tech specs right here on a piece of paper. So it took 30 minutes to drain from 100% to 90%. And then to bring it down to 75%, it took one hour and eight minutes. And to 50% was two hours, 15 minutes. Um, to 25%, it was three hours and 17 minutes. And to zero, it was actually three hours to 45 or 46 minutes. But what happened there was, it went from 10 all the way to zero, just like that, because I think the, the, the wattage was a little too high to sustain anymore. Um, in terms of running our router, and ONT. So our router and ONT, forgive me if my calculations might have been incorrect, but they add up to about 36 watts, being 12 volts at one and a half amps each. Right, so they both add up to 36 hours, and roughly to keep those two devices on for two hours, it used about 15% worth of the battery, going from 80 to 66%. And we've tested it with other devices like our TLC 43 inch, which is a 75 watt hour device. And we've tested it with other devices as well. And to say I was happy, the fact that it lasted three hours and 46 minutes on my 32 inch Sinotech TV, what actually happened there was we were testing, right? And we expected load shedding in like, I think it was two and a half hours or something, or it was three hours actually we expected load shedding. And I said, hey, you know what, that's sufficient time because it suggested two hours, so let's test it. It actually outlasted load shedding. The device that was powering the TV couldn't power the TV anymore because we lost that device. And it actually had to stop there and we had to pick up the, uh, the test. But that doesn't matter. Now, when it comes to experiences with charging, my experience is very much different compared to what the manufacturer suggests. So the manufacturer suggested between two and four hours worth of charging. The one time that we actually tested the charge or, or timed the charge was the, the fact that when we drained the battery all the way to zero, which was when we tested the 32 inch TV. And in terms of testing the charge, from zero to 10%, it took 52 minutes. And then from there to 20% took one and a half hours and to actually 100% it took seven hours and 40 minutes. Unfortunately, within my three weeks of testing this, we never actually got the chance to retime this entire charge cycle because I mean, eight hours, who has eight hours to wait around and actually time it 
or maybe we might have been incorrect but most of the time we charged it overnight so we could never physically time how long it took to charge but anyway that was my experience and I mean I'm 100% happy with this device I mean even though I we've gotten used to kind of simmering down and I kind of work off the MacBook when it is load shedding so I'm not very power hungry during load shedding but where this actually came in it powered the TV for one occasion it <coughs> powered the ONT in the router on numerous occasions during load shedding so I mean that helped us immensely it powered the ring light or the, the lighting situation in a couple of videos which we recorded during load shedding just for the authenticity so guys you know what I'm 100% happy with this device and the fact that I didn't mention any cons <sighs> you know what number I'm aiming for when I'm gonna rate this device I would rate this device a 9.5 out of 10 because I've been absolutely happy with this device how small how functional it is and I mean it has an LED display it tells you what's going on so you don't have to be perplexed as to what's going on with your power station and its price point it's absolutely awesome for that sort of price point if you're thinking about powering just a single device when you think about buying something like a ups it'll cost you a little less than that like 800 rand something like that but it won't provide you with the same amount of usability as something like this does so for its price i think it's in an awesome place and that's why it deserves a 9.5 out of 10 from us at TechScene ZA. So guys, make sure you like this video, you share it with your friends, as well as make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any more awesome content from us. Guys, thank you for watching. My name is Prashant and I'll catch you in the next video.